Good morning and welcome. Today we are going to talk about bladder cancer or to be very precise urinary bladder cancer. If you are interested in finding out more about gallbladder cancer which is a different type of cancer in different organ of our body then please watch the link below. So let's focus on this disease today. It is a relatively common type of cancer especially as we grow old it becomes more common. It's about 10th or 11th most common in the Western world. Age over the age of 60, more common in men as compared to women. And I think the reason it's more common in men is because historically, a few decades ago, men were smoking more as compared to women. Also, men had more catheters put in. And when we come to discuss the causes of the cancer, then we look into this further. There are three main varieties of bladder cancer, uroepithelial cancer or urothelial cancer. In the past was called transitional cell carcinoma. This arises from the lining of the bladder is the commonest variety as the bladder shares this lining with the tubes coming from the kidneys into the bladder called the ureters and also part of the kidney. Hence this type of cancer can happen not just in the bladder but can also arise in the ureters and in the kidneys. The two very uncommon varieties are squamous cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma. Squamous cell carcinoma happens because of chronic irritation to the bladder. Common in people who have catheters in their bladder for a long period of time or who get repeated infection of the bladder or who develop stones in the bladder Adenocarcinoma of the bladder arises from the cells that secrete mucus. Bladder cancer can be classified into two types, early cancer and invasive cancer or advanced cancer. Early cancer I've shown over here. So this is, for example, a bladder. The blue lining is outside lining of the bladder. And as we go inside, the green lining is the lining of the bladder which is the uroepithelium and any cancer which arises and only limited to the lining of the bladder not going deep is called early bladder cancer or early cancer if a cancer is going into the muscle which is i've drawn with the red line into the muscle and going to the outside lining of the bladder or beyond or spread beyond the bladder into the lymph glands all into the lungs or bones etc then that is called invasive bladder cancer or advanced bladder cancer vast majority of cancer that we see in clinical practice are usually luckily early bladder cancers so what are the patient's symptoms or what does the patient complain of if they have bladder cancer the most common symptom is blood in the urine and this symptom should never be taken lightly. If you see blood in the urine or if your urine is turning the color of a rosé or it's becoming color of a Coca-Cola, then you should always seek medical advice. Because of this symptom, the bladder cancer is picked up early because most people when they pass urine, they'll have a look at the color of the urine and if it looks bloody, then they will always get concerned about it and seek medical advice. And hence the bladder cancer is quite frequently picked up early. Other symptoms are patient wants to go to the toilet to pass urine more frequently. They have an urge to go, but they can't pass urine completely. They feel like there's still some urine left in there. When the bladder cancer becomes very advanced, it has spread from the bladder or is going into the lining of the bladder, into the muscle of the bladder and spreading beyond the bladder. Then pelvic pain, deep boring pain in the lower part of the tummy, bone pain if it has spread to the bones and weight loss. These are the signs of more advanced bladder cancer. So what are the causes of bladder cancer? The most frequent cause is smoking. Smoking puts us at a high risk of developing bladder cancer. In the 50s and 60s, 
when the industrial chemicals and the chemicals in our fuel, which is the diesel and the petrol, were not well regulated, then there were certain chemicals present in our industrial waste and also in our fuel waste that used to increase the risk of bladder cancer. With the control of industrial chemicals and also the fuel chemicals now in the industry, that risk is significantly reduced. Urinary catheters, people who require long-term catheters in the bladder because they cannot empty the bladder themselves because of injury to the spine or blockage to the bladder or their bladder is not functioning normally for whatever reason, then they are at a high risk of developing bladder cancer. People who develop repeated urinary infection, they are at a risk of developing bladder cancer. Bladder stones. Radiotherapy given, for example, to the bowel, which is lying behind the bladder, or to the uterus in ladies, which is lying just next to the bladder. Th these patients also have a high risk of developing bladder cancer. Certain chemotherapy drugs, which are given for different types of cancers, for example, drug called cyclophosphamide, which is excreted by the kidneys into the bladder, increases the risk of bladder cancer. In certain parts of the world, there is a parasite called schistosomiasis, which lives in the water, and that can infect the bladder and increase the risk of developing bladder cancer. So what tests are usually performed to diagnose bladder cancer? A simple urine test to check for blood in the urine gives an indication that there is a possibility of bladder cancer. Also, sometimes the urine sample is sent to look under the microscope for cancer cells, and that can also diagnose bladder cancer. However, cystoscopy, which is a camera put under local anesthetic through the urethra from the bottom end, going up looking into the bladder is the easiest way and the most commonest use investigation to diagnose bladder cancer. To check for the cancer spread and the stage of the cancer, whether it's early bladder cancer or advanced bladder cancer, further tests like CT scan, MRI scan or PET scan can also be used. Lastly, let's briefly talk about the treatment options that are available for bladder cancer. It all depends whether the bladder cancer is diagnosed early or it is advanced bladder cancer. Early bladder cancer can be removed by a procedure called TURBT, in which under general anesthetic, a camera is put up the urethra from below and the bladder cancer is cut out. This is usually given in conjunction with one or two doses of chemotherapy, which are again put into the bladder with a catheter. The treatment becomes a bit more complicated and a bit more invasive as the bladder cancer becomes advanced. Surgery becomes an option if the bladder cancer is invading deeper structures of the bladder and surrounding lymph glands. This surgery may include removing part of the bladder or even the whole bladder. Surgery is usually combined with chemotherapy and sometimes radiotherapy is also given together with surgery. For more advanced cancers, which has spread to different parts of the body, drugs can be given to enhance our own immune system, which helps our own immunity to attack the bladder cancer cells and to destroy those cells. If all fails and the tumor is too advanced or the patient is not fit for the procedure or any treatment I've mentioned up here, then symptom control like giving painkillers, nutrition, etc becomes important. I do hope you found this video informative. If you have any questions to ask about bladder cancer, which I have not covered in this video, then please write them in the comment section of this video and I'll be more than happy to try and answer the best I can. Thank you again for watching and until next time, I'll see you soon.